Hi guys, and welcome back to another Dot Race video, and today we're going to be playing Ride 4. We are here in Macau, ready for the lights to go out, and away we go! It's a wet track here today, as oh my goodness, someone's just died. Edna Ruiz Canto has just crashed out already. How could you crash out already? It's literally just started. Unbelievable. Oh my goodness, carnage up ahead! How did Peng Fang and Cheng Yuan survive that one? I have no idea. <laughs> oh my goodness, the Chinese Grand Prix has gone heck to a handbasket already in just a very, very short amount of time. Absolute chaos, carnage, and disaster for a couple of riders already. And already this has got quite a gap. We're up into seventh place after a wonderful move of the inside of Cheng Yuhan. And Joanne Nielsen just ahead of us. But we are up to sixth place already. I'm starting in the back of the grid. I've not even had a chance to mention what bloody bike we're on yet. <laughs> we are actually on board the Ducati 1098R, the race modified version. A terrific bike. And I thought, why not chuck it here and put it in the tight, twisty corners of Macau? Because I, I played this track a couple of days ago in the previous video, and I tell you what, I absolutely loved it. And it seems that you guys enjoyed it as well, so hence the reason we are back here in the Chinese Grand Prix. And the streets of China are going through a very tight, twisty section currently. And with the idea with the Takata... Oh, what on earth has gone on here? Oh, but oh my goodness, and Joanne Nielsen now takes the little bit of the lead. Oh, bloody hell. Uh, what, Joanne? <laughs> oh my god. What is wrong with the AI on this track, for goodness sake? That was preparing for a bloody good race here and it looks like this carnage has ensued even more unbelievable start I, I cannot believe what has just happened in such a short amount of time I've hardly even done the intro and yet there's been just absolute chaos uh, yellow flags out constantly then marshals are getting a massive pay rise and I've just bumped the back of Chang Yuan unbelievable Get them marshals a pay rise because their arms are going to be killing after wafting the yellow flag profusely around the track. They must have the radio comms and intercoms going absolutely ballistic right now. <laughs> I've been saying about the amount of crashes that have occurred already. But we do manage to escape somewhat unscathed. I don't think we actually made contact with anyone apart from bumping the rear of Chang just a moment ago. So I think lap one of five should be relatively smooth for us. We are up into second place and trailing by about a second to Chang Yuhan, the Chinese man in his home Grand Prix. So I'm guessing we just have to give it a bit of more uh, gumption, a bit more goal this time. We took it very steady around this first lap because there was just so much going on. It made sense to take it a little bit easier than we would do usually. I was going to pass Chang Yuhan there, but I've decided to hang back a little bit and let Chang be the guinea pig. Let him do all the donkey work. We'll let him test the water. Excuse the pun, because it is a very damp account here, but I'm thinking about a lunge up on the inside. Yeah, I can't say no to a lunge like that, unless I let him through again. Okay, Chang wanted to lead, yeah, let's give him the chance. I'd much rather chase him down and learn his breaking zones, etc, because of course I'm not great at this track yet. I do very, very much enjoy it, and it's certainly a challenge, because it feels like one corner, any corner could just catch you off guard, and that'd be it. That's your Chinese Grand Prix ended and you return straight back to the main menus with your heads in hands and tail between your legs. So we now go into maternity for turn 11. We're approaching turn 12 now. Cup centric around the outside here of uh, Chang Yuhan, but there's really no rush. With about four laps remaining, or at least three and a half, we've got plenty of time here to tackle the Chinese, but don't have to be concerned. Oh! Oh my goodness. <laughs> Can the AI just please stop crashing? I was just about to say, we had another Chinese man behind us who's also crashed, it seems, because Julio Silvera is in third place. But, unbelievable. This is going to be now a battle of attrition for myself to try and stay on board this Ducati. Of course, the Ducati's rear tyre is on 55% of degradation. 65 for the front, not too bad. You, you go relatively smooth on the front brake here. It's... There's not that many really super hard braking zones. I'd say a one or two, but most of the time it's just gentle braking. This is somewhat of a deep braking and then gently glide it into the Melco hairpin. But I've got to say, Macau, wow, this track has grown on me already. 
This is a track that I would just cower in fear at the sight of and think, you know what, I'll skip it. I'll do it in another video. And this happened probably quite a few times, but since the last one, I've realised how much I actually enjoy this track, so be prepared to see a lot more of this track, because I'm beginning to really, really enjoy it. And using a, in utilising different bikes, such as the Ducati, or even last time we were on the Honda, it gives me a, a, a good confidence boost knowing that I can tackle these tracks with some of the fastest motorcycles. Lap 2 down, only 3 more to go. Not a bad start for us so far. I mean, I can't imagine the AI catching up to us since they've so pants. They're just surviving and actually managing to get around this track unscathed. So I do think it's about us just putting in the lap times and getting better and better at this track. But this, is, of course, is past update, so post update, should I say. So the top end speed is a little bit better. Now, I've read recently that somebody was saying that the old physics are back. Now, I can tell you now, the old physics aren't back. I, I, it does not feel like the original physics. The original physics were absolutely terrific. And the, the physics on this game are still good. I'm still very much enjoying it. But it's not the way it used to be. It's not the original. But I've got to say, the update has improved quite a lot. The top end speed of the bikes are all improved. The AI is actually a bit more competitive. This is not a good example, since the AI is just kamikaze themselves into the wall. But for the time being, I'm really impressed. Of course, we do have the Italian style pack that came out yesterday or the day before. I'm not sure when I've actually uploaded this in the sense of editing it. But uh, I have not had a chance to do a video on those bikes just yet, but I do understand there's some nice nifty little Italian bikes in that, which I am very keen to try out, so stay tuned for more. And if you haven't subscribed already, now would be a great time to do so. Of course, it helps out the channel quite, quite a lot, so I would appreciate if you did. Same as the liking and the commenting. As we flick it right for our turn 20 for the Moorish Hill. With a nice Scottish flag outside there. Did you see that? I like to see that every now and again. Chuck in different flags. I've seen quite a few different flags at this track, actually. Of course, we've just seen the Scottish one there. There's the Czech flag, the Chinese. Uh, the Turkish flag, I do apologise. It almost buggered up the flag there. I think there was a Russian flag ahead of us as well. Not that great when it comes to the old flags, but I, I do try and get by where I can, or learn them as I go. But lap three, pretty successful so far. We have increased our lap, our lead to eight seconds, so quite, quite a chunky lead there. And I very much doubt that AI, like Kang Wu, is going to turn into another gear and just chase us down. I would love for that to happen, but I just don't think it is. You can see in the graphic in the bottom left-hand corner, it's <laughs> it's, a, it's a country mile at this point. Forgot to mention as well, I'm rocking the Danilo Petrucci helmet. Of course, that uh, is not going to be his helmet next year because it will not feature the Ducati logos on it. We'll see, he's on the Tech 3 KTM. Looks absolutely stunning in MotoGP this year. I cannot wait to see that in action. It looks absolutely brilliant. Very, very exciting. And of course, MotoGP 21 has been announced. So stay tuned for that. Uh, I will be dropping tons of MotoGP 21 content. And I cannot wait to bring it to you. So stay tuned for that one. 100% I'll be uploading and I'll be ready and willing and able to deliver as much content as possible. Of course I am still going to be keeping up with Ride 4 content as well because there's still a lot of DLC to go and I'm yet to complete the entire career mode 100% so stay tuned for that as well. Quick mention as well I will be doing another live stream soon so bear that in mind it will be another Saturday or potentially a Sunday. And I will discuss with you in the comment section, the Discord server, and in future videos. So bear that in mind. I will be live streaming soon, hopefully next week, which would be Saturday 27th. So jot that down in your calendar for the time being. That could change, and it may well change. But I'll, of course, keep you updated nonetheless. So we're up by two tenths of a second already on this lap, so a pretty tidy lap for us so far. I don't think we're going to uh, do any world record pace laps on this one. Of course, it is still a damp track. It's more or less drying, but of course, we're still rocking the rain tyres. We have to be very careful not to accelerate too much. You can already see the front tyre is getting rather warm. It's not hot, it's just warmish. I'll have to keep an eye on that one as we go, with the rear tyres down to 26% degradation. As we flick it right for turn 20 once again. Shout out to the Scottish flag once more. And we'll hold it left at half past two. Here in China, 27 degrees in this wet track. As we get a little bit more of a stutter there. We've had a couple of stutters in this one so far. Shout out to Lucas Souk up on the left-hand side of the screen there. 
He's in third place. I think he was in receipt of that after someone just perished. I didn't see who it was, of course, because there's just really not much for me to see there. Increasing this lead to 11 plus seconds now. As you can see, it's going up by tenth by tenth. Every other corner. Really, really good stuff here on this penultimate lap. And I tell you what, this race has absolutely flown. I do really enjoy this track, and I implore you to give it another try. I know it's difficult, and I know it's a bit of a pain in the arse to get round and then crash and then realise you have to restart the entire Grand Prix. But it is worth it. It's, it's tremendously satisfying. There are such tracks in this game that offer such a fantastic challenge, yet a rewarding experience. The Norge Life being one of them. Caldwell Park, I would also say, is in that category. Because you can be caught out extremely quickly on Caldwell Park. Chuck in Macau as well, and Kyle Army, because Kyle Army is a, a few cheeky corners here along the way. I would say the list goes on, there's many tracks that can be caught out, but of course if you are still improving in this game, I'm guessing a lot of the tracks will be a little bit difficult for you. But always stay focused and stay positive, and if you do need any more guides or any more recommendations or some assistance from myself, always let me know in the comments section down below, I'm more than happy to help out give everything I can to try and help everyone get to the same level as myself or hopefully even higher but we will do it together we will constantly improve as this gap is now over 14 seconds or near enough to 14 seconds it's still hovering it's teetering somewhat but uh, as we flick it right for turn 11 for the maternity for the final time of asking and once more for the very tight left hand you got to be careful to break early there not too late it's a little bit deceiving it does give you the impression that it's actually quite a long corner but it's actually a little bit shorter than you think. We then flick it left for turn 14. Get ready for turn 15 for the Solitude S's. And break early here for turn 16. A little bit earlier than you think might be possible. And get ready to flick it right. Oh, careful of the wall as well. Don't be scratching that brand new helmet. Wouldn't want to bash an x light helmet. They're quite tasty. As we flick it right once more for turn 19. Turn 20. The Moorish Hill as this gap has gone up to almost 19 seconds. As Hugo Fatalo has now just taken over third place, so that means there is another crash behind. That needs to be fixed. It's the racing lines of the issue. As Mad Max mentioned out in Suzuka, it, it's the racing lines that AI take. They start a battle on the rumble strips and just slide out of the Grand Prix. Or in this instance, they're just too close to the walls. And speaking of being too close to the walls, we were a bit too close there. Any little bit further, we would be put into the walls of Jericho, never mind into the wall itself. So bear that in mind if you are going to be tackling this track. So use all the bits of the track you can, but just be careful about clipping the walls. It, it's it's not what you want. So guys, wow. I think we've dominated it in quite demanding fashion. I'm very impressed with this one. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a funky wheelie. If you did... Please like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell to be alerted to every single Doc Trace upload. Thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you next time. Ciao for now. Oh, hi. Didn't quite see you there. Good to see you're still here. If this video didn't quite set your appetite, then why not watch some more Doc Trace content by clicking the video shown on screen now. Furthermore, if you would like to follow me on social media, you can do so now with the links down in the description. Consider subscribing so you don't miss a single Dr. Ace video.